In this video, I will answer the common questions. Do I have to eat only organic food? And are non-organic foods bad for you? Hello, my name is Dr. Iggy Suse. Welcome to my channel, Gut Health for Life, where I will be discussing all issues related to gut health and the microbiome based on research studies and my clinical experience. If you have seen my old videos, you know my mantra is, you need to eat 30 different vegetables per week. But do they have to be organic? The short answer is, it depends. And I'll expand it with the metaphor of the canary in the coal mine. What, you say? Stay with me. I promise you, you will find it interesting and may change the way you see your foods. So the debate of organic versus non-organic goes on. The opponents say, it's a con. Those for organic food say, all those pesticides, they'll kill you give you cancer and so on. So who is right? One argument about organic foods not necessarily being responsible for greater health is that studies have shown that people who eat organic foods are better educated, have a healthier lifestyle, in that they don't smoke and exercise regularly. So the argument is that these people are healthy in the first place and not healthy due to eating organic foods. This is the old chicken or egg argument, which came first. Let's look at the science, the research, and what I've seen in my medical practice over many years. But first, some basics to make sure we're on the same page. Organic farming is the production of food without the use of synthetic chemicals or genetically modified components. Organic foods are not necessarily pesticide-free. The studies show that the pesticide residues will be considerably lower than those grown with synthetic chemicals. You see, if the organic farms are relatively close to non-organic farms, the sprays can drift into the organic farms. That is why you may get pesticide residues, but a lot less than in non-organic produce. Some naturally occurring pesticides are permitted for use in organic farming and include pyrethrins that are derived from the chrysanthemum flowers. It is an insecticide and is used in household insecticide sprays as well. The closely related pyrethroids are synthetic and more toxic to insects and animals and not used in organic farming. Essential oils are also used as insecticides in organic farming. Let's talk about the quality of foods produced in those two ways, organic and non-organic. The science says, as far as macronutrients are concerned, there's not much difference. By macronutrients, I mean proteins, carbohydrates, fats, and dietary fibers. No difference, no argument here. What's different then? Organic foods have been shown to have 20 to 70% more antioxidants, depending on which antioxidants we're looking, talking about, and more polyphenols than non-organic foods. Now, polyphenols are nutrients that keep blood vessels healthy, improve circulation, reduce inflammation, control sugar, and more. The interesting point is that plants produce polyphenols when stressed to protect themselves against pests. If there's no danger of pests because it has been sprayed with pesticides, not much polyphenols are produced. The benefits in organic produce are numerous and I will mention just a few. Organic foods like meat and dairy have higher concentrations of beneficial omega-3 fatty acids that are anti-inflammatory and help prevent heart disease. Children consuming organic foods have a lower incidence of allergic diseases. Children at two years of age had a much lower incidence of eczema if their mothers were consuming organic dairy products. Male fertility is improved with improved sperm quality and concentration. Now let's talk about the chemical pesticides. Are there health risks? The long-term safety of pesticide consumption through conventional farming has been questioned. Because of the increasing use, pesticides or their residues 
had been observed in food, drinking water and groundwater, so pesticides can effectively enter the body of animals and humans by food and water. Studies have shown that there may be a number of problems from pesticides that I will mention shortly. It is difficult to do proper human studies with pesticides. Humans are complex animals and eat a variety of foods, are exposed to other chemicals and have variable behaviours with the amount of exercise, sleep, alcohol consumption and levels of stress and so on. All can impact health. So how do you isolate chemical pesticides from all those mentioned? The simple answer, it is very difficult. Animal studies are clearer as mice can be tested in a controlled environment with only the variable being the chemical being tested. The gut and the microbiome are significantly affected by pesticides. In food, the gut is the first organ exposed to pesticides. The lining of the gut is damaged, leading to leaky gut, and all the problems associated with that. If you are new to my channel, see my video on, on leaky gut, link is below. The gut microbiome is altered by pesticides, causing dysbiosis. The summary effect of the various pesticides, that is insecticide, fungicide and herbicide, is that they damage the gut lining and the function of the gut and alter the microbiome balance that leads to gut inflammation and leaky gut, the development of atherosclerosis and heart disease, liver problems, obesity, immune problems, hormonal disruption, changes and neuroinflammation. These are the animal studies. Can we extrapolate to say this is the same with humans? Strictly speaking, we can't, we can't definitely say yes. But clinically speaking, that is from my observations and the sick patients that I see, we can form some conclusions. To put this in context, I would like to use the metaphor of the canary in the coal mine that I mentioned earlier. Since the early 1900s, British coal miners would take a caged canary down into the mine with them. When mining coal, odorless toxic gases like carbon monoxide are released that can be lethal. The canary is more sensitive to toxic gas than humans. The miners would keep an eye on the bird and if it fell off its perch, indicating the presence of toxic fumes, it was a sign to get out quickly. So the canary was used as an early warning system. I see patients who are the canaries of our society. They are very sensitive, sick people who are affected by the toxins in the environment. They react to chemicals in the laundry, detergents, cleaning chemicals, personal hygiene chemicals, and chemicals in food, and so on. Helping them avoid the chemicals in the food by eating organic foods and reducing other chemical exposures and improving their detox systems, they improve. I've stated it very simply, but it is a complex process. Using another, another metaphor, we who are not sick but feel fatigued or have minor gut problems are like frogs in hot water. If the temperatures increase very slowly, the frogs don't detect the increasing temperature and don't jump out. They adapt to the increasing hot water until it finally kills them. In our case, the healthy people are faced with an increasing chemical load. We have over 80,000 chemicals that are in use in the environment. With increasing exposure, our detox systems get overloaded and we slowly get sicker starting with minor symptoms and slowly get worse and worse until we get more severe illnesses like diabetes and heart disease, or cancer, immune problems and so on. I've extended my argument to include chemicals, personal and in the environment. But coming back to our original argument about organic versus non-organic foods, ideally we should be eating organic foods especially the very sick people who have reactions to the non-organic foods. But for everybody else, it may not be practical due to availability and cost. There is a compromise, though. The Environmental Working Group is a, 
it's a US organization that lists foods that are safe even though non-organic and those foods are minimally sprayed. They also have lists of unsafe foods that are heavily sprayed and should be avoided. They call these groups the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. This is covered in a YouTube video. The link is below. It is well worth watching. Oh, a common question I'm asked is does washing non-organic vegetables and fruit help? Most pesticide sprays are made to resist water. Otherwise, after spraying, rain will wash it all away. I started the video by asking the question, does our food need to be organic? And I said, it depends. As I explained, it depends on your state of health. Very ill, somewhat ill, or relatively healthy. If ill, you may need to go fully organic and do what, and do that with the advice of your health practitioner. If relatively healthy, you could avoid the dirty dozen and have the clean 15 in non-organic foods to reduce the ever-increasing toxic load we are facing. I'd like to leave you with one question. Are you a canary or are you a frog? I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you liked it or enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up below and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you for watching.